Hello people, welcome back to the Just Joe Football Show. It is Tuesday the 17th of August. Um, yeah, look, not a lot to get into in today's episode. Guys, we've got a few transfer links. We've got some under-23 stuff as well. Uh, before we get into today's video, I just want to say to everyone that wished me luck on my driving test yesterday, big shout out. If you don't follow me on social media, what, <laughs> what actually happened is I had a two-hour lesson prior to my test. Turned up at my test, and I forgot my provisional license. Therefore, they wouldn't let me do the test. So I didn't have my test. <laughs> and um, I've now got to wait till January for another test. So, yeah, not the best day yesterday. We had Manchester United Leeds on the weekend. And then, yeah, Monday. I don't like Mondays. I don't like Mondays. Tell me why. Tell me why. Boom time rats for you. I want to shoot ooh, 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 the whole day down. That's for the older generation there. But that's enough waffle and enough, you know, <laughs> therapy for Wayman. Um, let's get into today's video. And this is the moment when I take a stand of God. Right, we're going to start first of all with the under 23s. What a lineup it was last night! What a strong side we have. Of course, it was their debut game in the Premier League 2 top division, and they clipped the Eagles. Yes, they played Crystal Palace down at Selhurst Park. There was a big contingent of Leeds fans down there as well, uh, and they won the game 3 1. Uh, professional, professional job. Three points, three goals. There was a debut goal for Sean McGurk. Uh, a debut penalty save for Christopher Classen. Overall, it was just a great night work for the under-23s. Somerville uh, got himself on the score sheet, another good performance in that first half. Um, and he was taken off. And you have to think, is he being saved here? Is he going to be turned to on the bench next time we have issues on the pitch from a wing position? Will we see Somerville come on the pitch as opposed to Acosta? We were banging that drum in pre-season just a couple of weeks ago against Betis, etc., saying he should be there. It looks like that might be coming because one person that won't be is Perveda. He may have an injury, but he was, again, not in the match day squad for Manchester United and he wasn't in the under-23 squad to play Palace. Is he on his way out on loan? Is he leaving? Has he fallen out of the club? There's no news about an injury. What's going on with Perveda? Honestly, what's going on? And of course, Adam Forshaw as well had another game on his step towards, you know, recovery, full-time recovery. And he played 60 minutes uh, in the under-23s game tonight uh, against Crystal Palace. Um, so decent to see Forshaw out there. Debut penalty save for Christopher Klassen. Debut, penalty, uh, debut goal, should I say, for Sean McGurk. Um, Joe Geldhart did... Miss a penalty, however, that was the the one blip on the night. But overall, it was a it was a fantastic evening for the under twenty threes. Um, so great man, the future is bright. The future is Leeds. Uh, we're now just gonna have a little chat about uh that man again, Lewis O'Brien. I'm gonna continue to speak about him. It's a bit like Groundhog Day, isn't it? I'm confident the deal will be done this week. That's my thoughts anyway. But Huddersfield Town boss Carlos Corbran um did his uh pre Preston news conference. Uh, and he spoke, of course, uh, about Lewis O'Brien. Uh, he missed out at the weekend, as we know, due to a COVID-19 test. But the former Leeds assistant and under-23s boss at Leeds, Corbran, confirmed his availability for tonight's clash. So it'll be interesting to see whether or not Lewis O'Brien does start for Huddersfield or indeed is involved. We know he wants to leave. We know Leeds United are interested. He did say, I watched him yesterday. He works very hard to help the team. He is focused to help the team and committed to the team. I don't see Louis O'Brien as a kind of character that's going to say, right, I'm going to refuse to play, nor do I want a player coming to Leeds who's going to be that kind of player. Because um, I, I think, if anything, if he was like that, it'd probably put Leeds off, if I'm being totally honest. But yeah, Louis O'Brien, want to keep your eye on, will he play for Huddersfield Town tonight in the Championship? We will have to wait and see. Uh, one player that was uh, left out of the squad, not due to COVID, um, it seems due to reasons that he might be on his way to Leeds United, is of course Leo Hageldi. He's been taken out of the Celtic squad. They had a Europa League qualifier against AZ Altmar this week, um, but he has been left out of that official squad list on the UEFA website. That's due to, obviously, the prospective move to Leeds United, we believe that 
the fee has been agreed with Celtic. There's, uh, it's been agreed between him and his agent. Um, so the 17-year-old could well be on his way to Leeds United to partner Charlie Creswell at the back of that under-23s defence. Now just going to flip over onto Tottenham Hotspur. And the reason we're going to speak about Tottenham Hotspur, we've got two updates that fit Leeds United. So as we spoke yesterday, that Leeds United want to get Patrick Bamford on a new contract to ward off any interest from Spurs. I don't see Tottenham Hotspur being interested in Patrick Bamford. I really rate Patrick Bamford. I told you this yesterday. However, I don't think he's a top six level side Premier League striker. That's just my opinion or a team that's playing regularly in Europe. I may be wrong. I may be wrong, but I just don't see him being a Harry Kane replacement. Well, it's coming out and being reported um, in the Telegraph that Bamford isn't coming to replace Harry Kane. Uh, it's in addition to Harry Kane, not instead of. So apparently Spurs are setting their sights on acquiring Patrick Bamford to play alongside or be a second choice to a Harry Kane. They still see that Harry Kane's going to stay at Tottenham for another season. We know that notoriously at Tottenham, whoever they brought in, be it Vinicius Jr., Soldado, um, who's the other guy they had on the bench that never got a game? Was it Jansson or something like that? Like, whoever comes in at Spurs never gets a game anyway. Like, hardly. They struggle to find a decent second-choice striker, a decent level of striker that's going to come in and be willing to sit on the bench. Do I think Patrick Bamford would be willing to do that? No, so it seems a bit of a strange one. But apparently, maybe Nuno says, look, I like Patrick Bamford. We'll have to wait and see. But it seems that Spurs are setting the sights on the White Star, not to replace Harry Kane, but in addition to Harry Kane. Look, I don't see any players leaving Leeds United this window. The only one I reckon could go, just based on recent developments, is maybe Pervader on a loan and Helder Costa, if indeed we can bring in a winger to replace Helder Costa. Um, another Spurs update, this time is, it's a player that's been heavily linked with Leeds United since forever. Apparently Tottenham have approached Cagliari for Nathan Nandes. Um, this is coming from the Oracle Fabrizio Romano. Apparently, he's on Sp uh, Spurs' list as potential new signings. He was due to join Inter. However, talks there have broken down, and it looks like Tottenham may be looking to acquire Nandez's signature. He's on the market, as I say, for around 25 to 30 million euros, which massively prices Leeds out of a deal. I don't think we were ever interested, apart from what they would tell you over in Italy and across the continent, but it looks like Spurs have him high up on their list, so we may see Nandes yet, but not for Leeds, actually against Leeds United when we play um, Spurs. Now, just to move on to some other news, guys, I don't know if any has got to see this, um, but there was actually a, a report done um, about how you know, fans felt about their their current owners in a fan hope survey done by Sky Sports. As you can see there, 80.3% of Leeds United fans are happy with the ownership of Rad Razani and the current management team. I'm actually quite surprised, guys, that 20% of the fan base aren't happy. Maybe if we'd have had a better window this time around, that number would be higher more closer to the top. I mean, look at Leicester, Brighton, Brentford. You can understand why they're happy. Villa as well, with the amount of money spent, always Man City because of what they've done to the football club. So we're doing all right. But I just think, still think 20% not happy. Like, after what we've been through, you just have to go back three, three owners before, you know, four, you know, GFH, Chilino, Bates, uh, Risdale, all these different people. Yet 20% are still not happy with Andrea Razzani. I think it's mad. I, I understand the bottom lot, but I just think the 20% that, that still aren't happy, it's uh, what do you want? Like, what, what? Like if you're one of them 20%, what do you want? <laughs> I think it's mad. I think it's mad. Um, Mateus Click has been called up to the latest Poland squad for their World Cup qualifiers. We know that Rafinha got his first Brazilian call-up just recently. And Mateus Klick will be involved in Paulo Sousa's Poland. Uh, next round of fixtures taking on Albania, San Marino and, of course, England. And just a little update for you. As you'll know, we've been linked to left-back slash winger slash attacking left-sided wherever you want, Maxwell Corney. Um, it looks like he is going to go to Burnley. Of course, our, our links to him and our interest in him dropped once we signed Junior Firpo. But apparently Burnley have had a bid of £13.5 million uh, accepted for the Leon winger. And it looks like him he may be on his way to Burnley 
I feel sorry for him. I do. I do feel sorry for Maxwell Corny. Um, could have come to Leeds United. We went somewhere else and now he's going to rock up at Sean Dyche as Burnley. Wow. Yeah, quite the drop-off, isn't it? Quite the drop-off. Thank you, as always, for watching the Daily Leeds. Not a massive episode for you today. Not a load of news out there, man. It's very quiet. Don't like it. Tomorrow, I will have your opposition preview. We will have the Blue Boys Network out uh, and on the channel, so make sure you look out for that. That'll be in replace of tomorrow's Daily Leads. It'll be your opposition preview with the Blue Boys Network. Make sure you keep your eyes out on that Huddersfield Town fixture. Let's see if Lewis O'Brien indeed is involved. You'd imagine if he's fit, ready, raring to go, he will be. If he is admitted, maybe his head's not in it and maybe a bit's being accepted, all this sort of stuff. These are things you've got to take into consideration. But have a great Tuesday. Have a better Tuesday than I had yesterday when I did what I did with that. Yeah, honestly, I could have cried. I'm not going to lie to you. It was either crying or I was going to do someone in. <laughs> and I can't really do anyone in. So, I, I, yeah, I, I went for a cry. I didn't really. I uh, I toughed it up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop talking now. I'll stop talking. As you can see, I've still not dealt with it. I'm still fuming about it. But listen, you have a great Tuesday. Thank you, as always, for watching the Just Joe Football Show and enjoying the Daily Leads. I love you all. Peace out now. Leads, leads, leads.